Welcome to the first session in our introductory series of videos for the Xeros software. For these sessions I'm going to be emulating the 48 fader version of the console, and also running on my laptop is capture visualisation software, so that we can work through and control our lights together. In this session we're going to get started with looking at the various front panel controls that our console has. So looking at our console then, on the left hand side we have our multifunctional faders. Multifunctional because they can either be channels or playbacks. By channels we literally mean the intensity control of our individual fixtures. So whether it be dimmers, LEDs, moving lights, or even a smoke machine, whatever it is, each individual light or fixture will have a fader that we can control it by. We have two pages of these fixtures, of these lights. Therefore, on the 24 fader version, you can have a maximum of 48 lights, and that then doubles to 96 lights on the 48 fader version. The other function being our playbacks, so that's where we can go and record lighting states onto our faders, whether it be cue stacks, chases, submasters, whatever it may be, anything that we want to record onto a fader to playback, we can store onto our playback faders. Again, we've got two pages of those as well. To the right of our faders, we then have our fader function button to toggle us between channels and playbacks and we have our page button to toggle us between our two pages. To the right of that we then have our master playback. This is an extra additional playback that we can use, and it's ideal for when you're doing theatrical lighting with just a single cue stack. You can record your cue stack onto this playback, rather than one of these playbacks, and it means you've got the dedicated go button and fader. To the right of that we then have our command keys of record, update and delete, keys that you're going to be using while programming the console. Above that we then have our four encoder wheels. What they're doing will change as you use the console. What they're currently doing is displayed in the boxes running along the bottom of the touchscreen. My window here is emulating what I can see on that touchscreen. 